Right, so a lot of you might be wondering how I'm going to balance my packs. So what I haven't done yet is done any balancing. What I've done is just connect all the packs together. Most of them were 4 point something volts and um, connected them up to test the inverter. So the, the bottom three packs, because I have charged them up individually using the IMAX B6, um, they are a lot more, they have a lot more charge in them than the, all the rest of the packs. Um, which created a bit of a problem because while I was playing around with charging the thing, um, I charged it up to 80 volts and the bottom three packs that were already almost charged went o slightly over 4.2. So, um, hence the reason for this video and um, what we need to do is balance it. So, the easiest way to balance it is not to use something like the IMAX B6, um, not for the first balance anyway. Um, what we need to do is first get all the packs um, in, um, in balance. And to do that in the simplest and easiest way, um, like other people are doing, especially like the HP Powerwall did, where he um, used or uh, Daisy changed a uh, Daisy chained a whole bunch of wires um, to link them all together, link all his seven packs. Um, we're doing a very similar thing, but um, we're doing it with 20, which makes things a little bit complicated. So the the reason um, I left those um, battery, um, if I just go across to here, I'll bring out a pack. See how I've left those those t um, two end, um, I suppose, terminals or whatever you want to call them, um, bits of nickel strip. So the reason I left them there um, is for balancing. Um, so it's, it, I'm not too sure if I'm going to cut them off after I've balanced it for the first time, but either way, um, they, they were there for the first balance. So the idea is pretty much quite simple. What I've done is I've just unconnect, I've just disconnected all the packs, so they're all just sitting here. And what I've done is I've placed a piece of wood in between to separate the positives from the negatives at the back. What I've then done is on the floor here, I've cut a couple of two long pieces out of my big thing of um, of the the um, the strips. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run these strips down um, the positive side here from the top, connected onto the top there, all the way down to the bottom. And I'll do the same for the negative, and that's going to connect all the packs together and balance them. So it's a nice, simple way to do it. Now, the, the way I'm going to connect these to the, um, the each of the cells, or each of the, the battery packs, is to use a peg, because that's all it needs. So what I'll do is I'll pretty much put this beside, uh, or under this red wire, and then peg it to the, um, the um, battery pack and then it will start um, balancing. So it's nice and simple and that way I can just pull out my piece of wood, pull out, oh, obviously I can click this, pull out my piece of wood and put all the batteries back together um, and we're all sorted. So what I'll do is um, I'll just peg it up and we'll have a look. Right, so 10 minutes later we're balancing. That was exciting. So this is what I did, was I pretty much clipped it around the top and then each of these has a beautiful peg on it. Um, I didn't try and match colours, but as you can see, it's all pegged up. So just that strip was just pegged to all of them. And down to the bottom, I might just flip this around slightly. The pegs hold it pretty well. Um, it doesn't need like a you know a, a firm connection. It, it's pretty firm. So, yeah, it's um, it's, kind of, it's a bit fiddly, the back stuff is a bit fiddly, I must say. I used a really, one of those um, big peg things at the top for holding bits and pieces, um, just because it was a bit fiddlier. But, all in all, it's working really well. So, what I'll do is... Um, now that that's all pegged up and balancing itself, I just stuck some, um, some some tape stuff at the top just to hold that piece of wood in there. Just the last thing I wanted to do was the wood to fall off and then pull some other stuff out and it turned chaotic. So um, the wood's there obviously to make sure that there's no, um, if any peg or anything happens that they don't connect between the positive and negative. So the e a piece of wood was the easiest thing to do to just throw in there. But this process took a little bit about 10 minutes. Um, so nice and quick and easy to do to just unplug everything, 
if I had the pegs ready, it would probably be a bit quicker. If I had the same size peg, um, it would have been quicker still. Uh, or the same size and type of peg. Um, so, yeah, 40 pegs later, we're all um, balancing. So what we'll do is we'll leave this until tomorrow and with any luck, the, pa uh, the packs will all be in balance. The, um, it's obviously easy to tell. Um, what I'll do is I'll pull them all up and then just check the voltages on each of the packs. And, um, and yeah, so hopefully, um, by tomorrow we should be all in balance and then we can um, hopefully throw a bit more charge into it. Um, I'm just so far just using um, just to kind of bring the voltages up slightly after I was playing with the um, inverter in the last um, couple of well, the last week. Um, I'm just using a 600 watt DC to DC converter. Um, it only goes up to 80 volts uh, but at least it's it's better than nothing. Um, I did have um, a bigger, the more powerful version of the boost converter. Where is it? Um, now I was using this. Uh, I, I attempted to use this, and I had it up to 13 amps, and it shut itself. The fuse went pop, and then I rep I replaced the fuse by soldering just a piece of wire, just a very thin piece of wire at the bottom, just to see if if it was anything else. Um, because this fuse is a pain in the ass to, oops, there we go, in focus. This fuse is a pain in the ass to replace because you've actually got to unsolder it. Um, so I thought I'd just throw a quick wire on there just to see if, um, if, if, if I did replace the fuse, we can get it up and going again. And no, it's still got a dead short somewhere. So I'm guessing this big, um, FET or MOSFET or whatever that thing is, um, is dead as well. So I'm going to have to... Um, unsolder that and get a new one. Unfortunately, uh, I'm going away in a couple of weeks and I can't get one from China um, quick enough um, before I go away. So this would be fantastic to start with. This is the 900 watt um, boost butt converter, or boost converter, sorry. Um, the problem is, is that it really needs more cooling than this. Um, this got really hot and I stuck my um, thermometer thingy on it um, and yeah, it went up to um, 80 degrees and that's most likely what did pop the um, the MOSFET or FET whatever that thing is so power transistor or it's a 150 watt one uh, whatever one it is oh, 150 it's either 150 watts or 150 amps but it's um, quite a booty thing um, so hopefully if I replace just this unit here the rest of it will get up and going again then I can replace the fuse um, I'll put a, a fuse that I can actually replace easily um, maybe slightly less current. It's got a 20 amp um, currently, so maybe a 15 amp so that the fuse blows before something else cuts it. Um, maybe this overheated and blew, which actually blew the fuse um, rather than too much current because I'm pretty sure there wasn't, um, there was only 13 amps going into it using my little blue um, amp meter voltmeter thing. So yeah, I don't know. This this would have been fantastic because this way I could have got over 80 volts and got to my 82 point something. But the the 600 watt boost converter, um, yeah, it's it's obviously going to be a heck of a lot slower. But all I need is just a temporary solution just to kind of bring these packs up to voltage um, once they're finished balancing. So anyway, that's a bit of an update, a bit of a small ramble. Um, but hey, um, why not?